This is Pastor Mike Brunner of Bible Christian Center in Slipper Rock. First of all, I'd like to extend an invitation to you if you're in the Slipper Rock area to come to our service Sunday 1030 at the Slipper Rock Park Building. And also, as you're ready to enter in and, and listen to the Word of God regarding this service, I want to share with something with you I believe will be of great help to you. Everything we do at Abba Christian Center is in the context of intimacy with Jesus Christ. God wants you to know this. He died not just so you could have eternal life, but that His life will become your life. What do I mean by that? 2 Peter 1, 3 and 4 says, He's called you to partake of His glory and virtue of His divine nature. It means that the very faith of God, He, he wants it to be in you. Romans 12, 3, Galatians 2, 20, the very love of God uh, that caused Him to die for you. He wants that same love to be in you. Romans 5, 5. He wants the very life intrinsic to his own being because you're his literal child. He wants his life glory to God to become your life. He wants his faith to be your faith. His love to be your life. His wisdom be your wisdom. His compassion to be your compassion. You say that's almost too good to be true. I want to tell you something. Jesus Christ is too good to be true for your mind. That's why he's given you a heart to believe, I trust that with your heart you enter into the message today knowing that he died that his life might become your life. Apply it to our lives. It says that when they came back from battle they saw their community burnt with fire. Their wives had been taken. Their children had been taken. But yet none of them were harmed but they were carried away. And David and his men came to the city and it was burned with fire. And then in verse 4 it says, David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Mm. It goes on to say in verse 6, David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him. That would get you distressed. Because the soul of all the people were grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. I don't know about you, but there are times where if it's not for the grace of God, I tell you, it just isn't, we're not going to be able to go on. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. Very simply, David did what he could do, and then God entered in to doing what only he could do. So often, we're waiting on God to do something for us, but God's waiting on us so he can do something for us. Amen? And the devil's always right there to say, why did this happen? Why didn't this happen? Why didn't this work on and on? We have to respond to the devil. Amen? We've got to respond to the enemy. I've shared the last couple of weeks that Jesus, the Bible said in Mark chapter 11, he answered the fig tree. Well, obviously, you don't answer somebody that doesn't spoken to you. So how could a tree talk to him? Well, the tree was conveying that, you know what? You're creator of the world, but yet I'm not giving you the fruit that you ordained me to give. Really, it was a spirit that was trying to mock the Lord himself by saying, you know what? What you need is not going to be present. Jesus answered that by destroying it. Amen? The devil's always going to tell you and me that it's not going to happen. But we need to answer back. Amen? If you don't answer the enemy, he's going to continue to speak louder and louder to you. Amen? And it's an opportunity to give glory to God. So, we, so what happens is he answers the enemy, he encourages himself, and then he inquires to the Lord in verse 8, he said, shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And God answered and said this, pursue for thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover all. And that's why I really feel like the Lord's saying, pursue, overcome, and recover. Amen? Amen. Pursue, overcome, and recover. And sometimes it's not the easiest thing in the world to pursue. Amen? When you feel down, it's not easy, amen, to pursue. You, you, it's a difficult thing. But God told him to pursue, overtake, and you will recover all. 
And we know the rest of the story how he found a, a young man that they had left behind. And this young man uh, led them to the people that the, had taken so much. And, and they did recover all. But the key is this, how do we pursue when you feel that you're down? And I, I, as we're worshiping, and I, I, God just spoke. And we know these verses, but let's go to Isaiah 40, if we would. Isaiah chapter 40. You know, if you are walking with Jesus for real, and I know we are, you wouldn't be here if you wouldn't. We're going to start with Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. You're going to encounter some battle. Amen? Anybody figure that out yet? You know what I'm saying? Battle is an indicator. If you're in battle, it's an indication that you're doing something right. Seriously. You know, if you're in battle, there's a reason for it. It's because the devil's afraid of you, or as you are pursuing, he will try to intimidate you to stop you from pursuing. Amen? He really will. He knows he can't defeat you if you continue to go on. But if he can stop you through intimidation, through deception, then he can win. All right, so Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28, says, Has thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faints not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. What this is saying is that God is not overtaken by your situation and my situation. Amen? God is not in heaven wringing his hands. He always has provision. Glory to God. And it says, He gives power to the faint. Okay. To them that have no might, He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So He gives power to the weak. In 2 Corinthians 11, Paul says, I will glory in my weaknesses because when I'm weak, I'm what? I'm strong. In the world, what's the world? The, the world covers up their weaknesses. Amen? The world pretends like they're strong when they're not. We can say, God, I feel weak. But because you're my strength, amen, I am strong. Glory to God. So God gives power to the faint. God gives power to us when we are in a time of weakness or difficulty. Glory to God. The Bible says that where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. God always raises a standard. And when we are in battle, and man, we feel weak, and it's difficulty, and it's hard. God will always raise up a standard. His grace will be more than enough. Glory to God. And sometimes, man, it doesn't look that way. But God is, mm, that's when you're strongest. Many times when you cannot feel him, many times when you do not sense him, many times when it just doesn't look like it's going to happen, that's when you are the strongest. And that's when victory is about to break. Someone that a lot of times is younger in the Lord, they're, they'll be up and down, you know what I'm saying, and depending on their circumstances. But the Apostle Paul said he was content and he was strong even in difficult circumstances. He said he learned how to enter in, amen, to being strong no matter what the situation. And all of us are growing in that, no matter how old we are in the Lord. But the Scripture says this, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Glory to God. If the devil can convince us that we are not as the eagle, but like a crow or something or someone that is unable, he's going to win. The devil will try to make it like everything is uphill. 
So what's the provision? When we wait on the Lord, that just means to be consistent. Amen? Patience does not mean to be belittled and degraded and beat up. When you're being patient, it just means to be consistent in what you believe because you know that it's going to cause you to rise. I'm going to say that again. The devil is a being of degradation. The devil is a being of oppression. The devil's a being of depression. And he ever lives to put people down, to kill, rob, and destroy. Sickness is oppression. Financial lack is oppression. Inability in the, in, 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 is oppression. Sin is obviously oppression in the sense that it will, it will destroy. We've got to know as we wait upon God, as we're consistent in speaking out the verses that God's given us revelation of, it's going to cause us to rise. Glory to God. The Bible said, I would have despaired had I believed I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Glory to God. That person you're praying for can be a husband, a wife, a son, a daughter. That, that person that God's laid on your heart, our nation, as we continue, glory to God, to wait on God, as, to be consistent, things will break. But as we were worshiping, man, I just saw the enemy, he will do everything he can to oppress, everything he can to destroy. That's what he gets off on. God has made us in a way that we're to rise, we're to reign, and we're to live in the high places of the earth. What's that mean? It means that, man, here's what's exciting to me. When I feel weak and I speak the word, every time I speak the word when I feel weak, you know what I'm doing? I am entering into the currents just like the eagle that caused me to rise. Yeah, yeah. Glory to God. Every time I speak the word, when it looks like it's getting worse, I'm rising, glory to God. And most of us understand the eagle, he's made in a way that he enters in, he ascends the great heights because of the currents that take him. Glory to God. You don't see an eagle struggling to fly. Amen? An eagle doesn't say, man, I cannot believe God told me that I have to go this high. How come he didn't tell other you know, birds that you have to go this high? And he struggles. Now the eagle, he lets the currents of the air take him high. Amen? He's made that way. God's given us his word first and foremost. His voice, his presence, the encouragement from others. So we rise, amen, and we live high. Again, if you and I are living below, that is where the enemy's at. The enemy cannot go as high as the eagle. Now, I shared this prior, but I, I think it's a good analogy. When uh, Kathy went to Tibet a while ago and they were on a mission trip, you know, they went so far and then they had to buy canisters of oxygen. Because to go further, your body just couldn't do it without the canisters of oxygen. The enemy can only go so far. He can only go so high. As we are above, that's when we have victory. Amen? If we let ourselves live low, then we're going to have fights that we shouldn't have. We're going to be fighting crows. We're going to be fighting vultures. You're going to be fighting people that have no right to fight you. Amen? But if you're high, glory to God, if you're above, you know what? That's God's provision. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 1 if you would. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter 1. So if you get anything out of this, understand God's provision is for us to be higher than the enemy, to be stronger than the enemy. Glory to God. And being in a place 
where the enemy is below us and never above us. Glory to God. So let, let's look, look at this. Let's start, uh, let's go, verse uh, 17. I pray that the God of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding, some translations say the mind of your spirit, being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. And the hope of his calling, amen, is Christ in us, the hope of glory. It's a hope that we all have, man, to walk like Jesus walked, amen, to enter in and experience the glory of God. And what are the riches of the glory of his, his inheritance in the saints to see the heart of God? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe, According to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised them from the dead and set them at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Now here's the key. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Glory to God. Now the enemy is going to try to make himself to be higher than he is. Take any name contrary to blessing, contrary to health, contrary to just walking with Jesus. We'll, we'll just take a couple. Condemnation. The devil, man, he is a master of trying to make condemnation a name that's higher than forgiveness. There's so many Christians say, I, I know that God's forgiven me, but I know he's not a condemnation, but that word but will cause you to live low because the word but discludes excludes anything that came before it. So you say, I know that God's forgiven me, but guess what? Now the forgiveness part is out and the condemnation part is in. Mm. Let, let's look at a couple more, all right? Depression. You know, uh, there are times where we all get depressed in the sense of our joy isn't there like it should. And that can become a spirit that really causes us not to live in joy. And it becomes so real to us at times that we live low. And God's provision, he said, put on the spirit of what? The garment of praise in regards to the aspect of depression. Every time there's a name that would bring you low, you've got to speak the name that will bring you high. Amen? Every time there's something that brings you low, you've got to speak a scripture that brings you high. Amen. That's right. Glory to God. And worship's a good thing. To, man, worship does what? It lifts you up. Glory to God. Man, you don't feel that, man, that, that God's going to come through, but then you begin to worship. You begin to thank God for who he is. You begin to enter into a place. Whew. And what happens is, now you're lifted up. Glory to God. We know that one of God's main names is El Elyon, the God who lifts up. God will never put you down. He will convict you. He will exhort you and me, but he will never put us down. He ever lives to lift us up. Glory to God. Any name that the devil would try to use to bring you down, God has a name, amen, to lift you up. You know, I, I, you hear the name, uh, I was at a board meeting for a, a certain organization a while ago, and there's a lady sitting beside me, a friend of Kathy ours, and she's really a nice lady that loves the Lord. And uh, she just looked, you know, depressed, and I said, what's wrong? And she said, it's the C word. And I said, what do you, oh, then I got a cancer because she had a friend that died. And I get it, that's hard. But the bottom line is this, cancer is a name 
that destroys, affiliated with that name, is, is harm, right? And destruction. But now I just whispered to her, I said, you know what? I got a C word as well. She said, what? I said, cross Jesus. Glory to God. You've got to speak up so you can be lifted up. Amen? Man, if there are people around us that are being harmed, there are, if you see things that are, man, and in the last days, there's going to be difficulties. But we will always be up. Glory to God. So what happens is this. When we're walking in the reality of the eagle, when we're walking in the spirit of El Elyon, it's a special spirit. It's a spirit that causes us to be in a place where the enemy really is under your feet. Amen, as this says. There is no name, there is no demon that is meant to be able to rise above you or to put you down and have you stay down. Amen? Amen. And right now in the world, what happens is you're seeing as never before, spirits rise up to cause destruction. And the only way that you're going to defeat them in your own life and for your, your, your family, your community, your nation, honestly, is to, is to tear them down. Amen? If you think about it, all through the Old Testament, the main problem was they were always building what the Bible calls high places. They would build these high places because in, some, in their mind, they would go to the high places. And these high places were indicative of them appeasing spirits. And they, were, they would worship, I mean, Moloch, they would worship Baal, they would worship all these demonic spirits because they entered into a place of not being able to walk with God in a high way. Why do people take, why are so many people right now dying of overdoses and drugs and, 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 and addicted to everything you can think of? It's because they're trying to get a high, they're trying to rise because they've been messed up so much, they're trying to rise. When they are taking the, uh, the, the drug trip, they're in a place in their mind or their emotions, right, that they're high. Obviously, that's why we call them, they call getting high. Whether it's pornography, whether it's addiction, whether it's success, it's the world's way, amen, of trying of trying to be where they should be through Jesus. And the only way we're going to live like the eagle is through Jesus. All right, let, let's look at uh, 2 Chronicles 20. Glory to God. God, I, I really believe, wants to encourage us today in the sense that, mm, glory to God, glory to God. There's so much here. Let, do me, I'll tell you what, let's go to 1 Kings 18. We'll eventually get to Second Chronicles 20. Let's go to First Kings 18. First Kings 18, 41. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Mm. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It said, Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for this, there is the sign of the abundance of rain. We know it hadn't rained for three and a half years at the, as the word of Elijah. Now, the, he's in a place where, I mean, they're trying to get it to rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink. Elijah went up to the top of Coronet Mount. He cast himself down upon the earth, put his face between his knees, which is the Hebrew birthing position. And he said to his servant, Go up now, look towards the sea. He went up and looked and said, There is nothing. Six times in a row, it seemed like there was nothing. But the seventh time, glory to God, there was a cloud the size of a man's hand. 
and it was indicative of rain. Those six times where he prayed and there seemingly was nothing, he knew that there was, there was something that God was breaking through. Every time he prayed, every time he spoke, something was happening. See, that's the way we wait on God. We wait on God speaking, believing that what we're waiting for is going to manifest. Glory to God. You know, when Elijah was with the, the widow, and the Bible says that her, her son, her son died. You see something that's very uh, similar. 1 Kings 17. Let's start with uh, verse 15. She's dying, her and her son are dying, and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. She and he and her house did eat many days, and the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord which he spoke by Elijah. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman fell sick, and the sickness was so sore that there was no breath in him. So here's a lady Man, things are going well. And then all of a sudden, her son dies. Wow. And it came to pass after these things, the son of the woman fell sick, and he dies. And she said unto Elijah, What have I have to do with thee? We're in 1 Kings 17, 18. O thou man of God, art thou come unto me to call my sin into remembrance and to slay my son? What'd she, what'd she say this for? Evidently, man, she had backslid. She, she was struggled. She repented. Man, if the prophet comes to her. She's lifted up. Amen? Man, she understands she's forgiven. She's lifted up. Everything's going well. And now her son that is dead. And she's now blaming herself due to her past. And she says, why? You know, why did you, you know, you blessed me only to destroy. He says under here, here's what I love some verse. Give me your son. He took him out of her bosom. And listen to this. Carried him up to a loft. That's a high place. Amen. Where he himself abode and laid him on his own bed. In the time of trial, you have to be able to take your situation to a high place. And the only way you can take your situation to a high place is if you're living high. That's right. Amen? Amen? So he took him to a high place. He took him up to the loft, and that must have been an easy task. I mean, his son is, is, isn't like a five-year-old kid. He's older takes him up, puts him on his own bed and cries unto the Lord. And he says, you know what? This lady has been through so much. And what he does is this. He lays on the son, stretches himself upon the child three times, cries to the Lord and said, oh, Lord God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come back unto him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived, being raised from the dead. Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house, delivered him unto his mother. Glory to God. Now, here's what I want us to say. What if Elijah would have said, man, I can't believe this happened. Put his head down and never went up. I'm going to say that again. What would have happened if Elijah put his head down, never would have looked up and went to the high place. That child would have never risen from the dead. Amen? And see, I'm going to be honest with you. That's what happened with Jezebel. Instead, after he killed the prophets of Baal, 
She comes after him. He should have killed her, right? Just like he did the other the prophets. Instead, the Bible said he put his head down, began to feel sorry for himself. Amen. And, and we're not into a desert, then end up in a cave. Because rather than going high, he let Jezebel take him low. Hmm. You and I have to understand God always has a provision to take us high. Glory to God. God always has provision to take us high. If you're going to put your head down, if you're going to feel sorry for yourself, if I'm going to feel sorry for myself, we will never enter into a place of destiny that God's ordained. Now here's what's interesting. In 2 Kings, Elisha, he comes across a very similar incident. He is being blessed by a Shunammite woman and her husband. They make a special room for him uh, and a servant, Gehazi. And he says to his servant, what is it that I can do for them? He says her husband's older and they have no child. So he prophesies that you'll have a child. And within a year, she has a child. Everything again is going well. But when the child is 12 years old, same thing that happened with the widow's son happens to her. Her child says, my head, my head's hurting me. Many times the devil's going to come after your head. I don't care if it's Alzheimer's or Parkinson, whatever. I mean, that's just what the devil does. And her son dies. Wow. And she runs to the prophet, to Elisha. He comes, and he does something very similar. Mm. He lays on the boy, because back then they're operating by outward anointing. And the body of the boy gets warm. Then he sneezes seven times, and then he rises from the dead. Mm. Now, again, if that mom did not run to Elisha, and he was, in, in that context, he was someone that was representing God, her son would never, ever risen. That's the whole key to the devil's strategy is to keep you down so you do not go high so he can keep you down, so he can keep your family down so they do not rise. Amen? God's calling the church to rise and to cause those around about us to rise. Glory to God. But if you and I keep our head down, if we don't have an upper room to go to in the time of trial, then we're not going to rise. God, I really believe, is speaking so strong. He's speaking to us, to the church as a whole. Live high, and when the enemy would try to bring you down, rise. Know this, that you will always rise. And those that the enemy would try to harm, you will cause them to rise. Glory to God. And those that are even unsaved, you will cause them to rise. Glory to Jesus. I used this illustration last night at the healing service. You know, these flowers, and I said this last night at the healing service, they're very beautiful flowers. And, uh, but here's the amazing thing about these flowers. They're dead. Really, these flowers are dead. The reason that they're dead is because there's no root. If you take the branch from the vine, the branch will wither and die. Will it not? It's amazing, since I got these flowers yesterday afternoon, that these buds 
This one's starting to turn into flour. But it's dead. What am I sharing this for? The enemy, even though Jesus has cut him off and laid him low, will make it look like many times that he's above. When he is below. And if you and I don't, see, if you're not high in the spirit, you won't see that. You'll live by outward appearance and you'll say, man, the Bible says that Jesus cut him off. The Bible says he disconnected the devil from me. The Bible says he laid him low. But man, look at this. I've cursed him, but he's still flourishing. I want here to tell you something. He's dead. He is as a dead man. The horse and the rider have been thrown into the sea. But it looks like he's still alive. It looks like the chariots of Pharaoh are still going to win. But they've been destroyed. And I said this last night and I'll say it again. The only way these flowers, which are dead, can keep their viability to some degree is if you put it in water. Isn't that the truth? If you put it in the water of unbelief, the water of fear, the water of having your head down, I'll tell you what, there are flowers that are dead that can look like they're alive for months. And in the spirit realm, if you don't reckon them dead, if you don't reckon your old nature dead, it can rule you the rest of your life and look like what's dead is alive, which will bring you down, and you'll never enter into the high places of the earth because what's really alive will seem like it is dead. How many Christians do you know have prayed and prayed, and then they ask themselves, why? Why is man what I prayed against, why is what I claim that Jesus destroyed still seem like it's alive? And most Christians answer them and cry with them, but never give them the true answer and say, I don't know. And you know what you're doing? You're just putting these things, you're putting it in more water. Here's the deal. The reason that this is dead is it because it has no vine. It is not connected. It will wither and die, will it not? Even Jesus said regarding the believer. Man, we read in John 15, man, if you get away from the vine, you have no life. So we're in a place where, I'm going to be honest with you, I would say, I don't like saying this, but the majority of Christians they're living in a false perception because this is what they see. And when you're down and you don't challenge this by saying you're dead, even though you look like you're alive, even though it feels like my old man my, it, it, it is alive, even though it feels like the devil has man dominance, I'm going mm, to curse the lie in Jesus' name. And how do I curse the lie? Glory to God. I go to the high place. I let the wind of the spirit, the currents of God, cause me to rise. And I speak and say, you know what? The world thinks you're alive. Most Christians think you're alive. But I see that you've been separated mm, from the vine. You've been destroyed and by the grace of God, I'm going to speak that. And it might take seven times. The first time, it might not look like it's withering. And the second time, it may not, not look like it's withering. Or the third time, or the fourth time, or the fifth time, or the sixth time. But I'm here to tell you, the enemy will always bow. As we do what? Wait upon the Lord. As we stay consistent, not just waiting on the Lord, getting battered, but waiting on the Lord 
letting God cause us to rise, confessing the word of God, entering into the spirit realm. And I tell you what, this will wither. The enemy is not strong enough. Glory to God. And victory will always come because we're made as the eagle to fly. Glory to God. The devil, we understand, he works by deception and he works by intimidation. The deception is, did God say? Mm. Did God say that, man, you're going to enter into victory. Well, if God said that, how come it doesn't seem to be working? Mm. Now, and then he says this, look at that which the enemy, look at what God says he has destroyed. Look at it. Look at it. It has not destroyed. In fact, it is as viable and as strong as you could ever think. Just because it looks a certain way doesn't mean it is. Amen? Glory to God. When David was at Ziklag, it looked like there was no way out. But God said, pursue, overcome, and you will recover all. When the widow's son died, it didn't look like there was a way out. When the Shunammite's son died, it didn't look like there was a way out. But there's always a way out. Because Jesus is the way. Amen? And what looks like it, rain, it will rain, when it looks like the enemy will rain, it's simply an opportunity to believe God. It's an opportunity to give him glory. When Lazarus died, what did Jesus say? This happened that the Son of Man might be glorified therein. Amen? So the church... The children of God, us, when we're facing difficulty, I tell you, one of the main ways we can glorify God, one of the main ways we can give him worship and praise is by doing what Abraham said. We will worship and we will be back. It looked like he was going to lose his son. But man, it was God's way of saying, you know what? Because you're willing to give your son, I want to let you know this is the type of me giving my son. Amen? Yes. We will worship and be back. Well, what happened when he said that? I believe that rim, man, got a, a whole lot closer to being caught. What happened when he said it? He went high. Amen? He didn't say, man, I cannot believe I'm being tested like this. He said, we will worship and be back. Glory to God. Mm. We want to enter into the power of God, and we will. But one of the main ways you enter into the power of God is going through things and not around things. Amen? When God tells you to share the gospel with somebody, and you say, you know what, I, I'm just going, I'm going to, it's good to pray. And you say, Lord, I, I'm going to pray, but no, I'm not going to go talk to them. Well, guess what? You've got to go through that. You've got to go through the fear of rejection. You've got to go through the emotions uh, uh, of man when you don't feel anything and believe in God. Amen? There are certain things that are not going to be realized in your character or mine until we go through something. Mm. when you go through what God's, what the, God's presented in the sense of what the enemy is trying to, to lay you low, and you say, you know what? I'm going to rise. I'm going to wait on God. I'm gonna, and while I'm waiting, I'm going to be speaking the truth, believing. That's when you're in a place where you can't be stopped. Because how are you going to be stopped when you got momentum of going high? You can't be stopped because now you're in the order of God. 
Man, you are in a place where you say, you know what? The name of depression seems to have a hold on my life. But man, you're saying, I'm not depressed because Jesus Christ does not fail me. And the, and the devil will always say, well, well, he has failed you. This or that. You have to say it's a lie. Jesus does not fail you. Glory to God. Man, when somebody is in a place where they, they do have cancer, I tell you what, it's a time where we need to rally around them and help them go high understanding that you know what? The name of cancer, the spirit of cancer, the destruction of cancer is nothing before our God. The name of cancer is nothing because it has been laid low. I'm going to say that again. Every name contrary to blessing has been laid low. The devil's trying to tell you that everything's uphill, Every, that you're the one, that somehow, man, this life is, is, is a life that's almost like it's hell on earth. How, how many times have you heard that? It's not hell on earth. The kingdom of heaven's come. Glory to God. As we speak, waiting on God, you will be invigorated, filled with the Holy Ghost, and you will rise. As I speak, when the enemy's trying to lay me low, I, I, I tell you what, I'm going to rise. In every name, Every strategy of the devil, it will wither and it will die. Glory to God. Now, as, we, as we're getting ready to close, I, I, I want to share this with you. How many Christians do you know live like we're talking right now? A lot of well-meaning Christians, they don't live like this because they've never been taught that this is how you need to live. Everything's always going to be roses. You can have your cake and eat it too. I was at a, a wedding reception and a pastor got up and he said in his prayer, in the pray for the blessing for the food, he said, and Lord, we thank you for this cake and ice cream and we rebuke the calories in Jesus' name. And I'm thinking, I looked at it and said, first of all, it doesn't seem to be working for him. And then I thought to myself, you know what? That's not how it works. Amen? There's going to be challenges. Being a Christian is not being exempt from challenges. Being a Christian is in the time when it looks like there's no way out, that Jesus is the way, and glory to God, we rise, we enter into greater strength when we feel weak. And the enemy who's come to kill, rob, and destroy, he's the one that ends up being destroyed. And God is glorified. Because the strategy of the enemy is destroyed and replaced with the strategy of God. You know, we looked at the, the, the widow's son. He was raised. We look at Lazarus. He was raised. We look at the Shunammite son. He was raised. When we stand, guess what happens to us? We are raised. We are raised. Glory to God. That's why the Bible says this. Any man among you sick, let him call for the elders of the church, let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick. The same words that used when you got saved for salvation, sozo. And the Lord will do what? Raise him up. Glory to God. You know, you have not because you ask not. I have not because I ask not. God wants us to ask. God wants us to receive. God wants us to confess for one reason, so he can raise us. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. El Elyon, the God of the upper room, the God of resurrection, the God who always raises up. I do not need to go to the high places of the world, whether it's false success whether it's a title in a church, whether it's a, a drugs, whether it's pornography, whatever it is, I don't need to go to a high place in the world 
Glory to God because Jesus is my high place. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I really believe in my heart that God's saying, you know what? Come up higher. But enter in to this reality of pursuit even when you feel low. That's tough to pursue when you feel like you've just been unjustly treated. Isn't it? Man, you're doing everything God told you to do. And now, man, you're laid low. And God says, pursue. You say, Lord, really? And God says, really, pursue. I will cause you to overcome, and you will recover all. Glory to God. And we know in that story in 1 Samuel 30, that's how Jesus, er, how David became king. He recovered so much spoil that he sent it to the, all the tw- uh, 12 tribes. And they said, this would be a good guy, right, to make king. And that's how he became king. If you and I are going to walk in victory, if you and I are going to really have people come to Christ because they see our lives, we can't walk with our head down. God says in the last days, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. Amen? You cannot and I cannot walk with our heads down. But here's the key. Why should we? Why should we? God is faithful even when it looks like his word is not true. His word is true. He is faithful. Glory to God. And he will cause us to rise. Glory to God. So often we say, Lord, Deliver me out of this and, you know, I'll worship you. God says, you worship me and I'll deliver you out of this. Amen? Glory to God. We could give so many examples like Paul and Silas. How easy would it have been for them who had been laid low, whipped, man, in in the inner jail and their own feces and urine to put their head down and say, why me? But what did they do? They said, why don't we worship? Why don't we worship? Because he's worthy. And what happened? Man, God sent an earthquake, delivered them, and the church at Philippi was born. I'll just close with it. Do you know what the church at Philippi was was the strongest church in the New Testament? Because it was birthed in what we're talking about. It was birthed by two men that said, you know what? I'm going to worship even in the midst where it seems I've been laid so low I'm not going to recover. I'm going to rise. Glory to God. The jailer saw it. He got saved. That church was birthed in a mindset that when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise up a standard. It was birthed in the reality that God will cause us to rise. He will cause us to be overtake the enemy and to reign. Amen. Let's stand together and let's pray. And those who are watching by YouTube or listening by CD, this is a message of God's heart. God has not forsaken you. God has not taken away his favor from you. God surely is not there to harm you. He's there to cause you to rise, to pursue, to overtake, and to reign. God Almighty is your Father. He has destroyed the yoke of the enemy. Even when it seems like it has not been destroyed, it has been. We lose grace to you. And those who are not saved, you need to come to Jesus for real. Because the way to overcome is through Jesus. In a way that only he can cause you to overcome. Glory to God. Father, we give you praise. Can you just confess this to me? Can you say, God Almighty, even my Father, I believe that you're good. I believe that your heart is towards me. I believe 
When I feel like I'm laid low, I will rise. I will pursue. I will overcome. And I will recover all. To your glory, honor, and praise. Glory to Jesus. This is what... Uh, I, I only word of knowledge, I saw the name Daniel, if that means something to somebody. But I, I tell you, I, I want to encourage you. If there's areas in your life where you're believing for yourself or for others, do not be dissuaded because it seems like the circumstances are contrary to the word or to the heart of God. If it's taken a while, maybe longer than you thought, do not be dissuaded. Glory to God. There is a rising up spirit here right now. And God wants you to know he will grace you and me to rise. God's provision is not sending some cloud down because you're down. God's provision is enable you to rise by grace so you can destroy the enemy because you're higher and stronger than him because you rose. Glory to God. I tell you, in this paradigm, you and I, will, all, will always, he will always cause us to triumph. But we have to enter in, not being like the Israelites. Every time, man, they didn't have water, they cursed God. But to say, you know what? There's water in the rock. Glory to God. And I will drink of it. Amen? Glory to God. We, are, we do not have an excuse to stay down. Really, we do not have an excuse to stay down. God has made provision to lift us up. Rabbi, I'm going to ask you to close us in prayer. And after she does, I, I, I just sense Jesus on this. Do not be afraid of the enemy. Do not be afraid of the mountain. And I say this to myself as well, because I tell you what, the mountain, man, that's 100 feet tall, it can, it can cause fear in you. The only way you cannot fear, amen, is through this, what we're talking about. Mm, Jesus. So I, I, she's going to pray, and then just either come up for prayer or tell somebody, you will rise. Amen? And can I tell you something? God wants you to be somebody that is causing those round about you to rise as well. When there, how many Christians do you know, seriously, that are walking away from Jesus? We're not condemning them, but I'll tell you what, they're walking away from Jesus because they don't think they can get up. It's time to teach the body of Christ to rise. Amen? Glory to God. Amen.